Okay, this is live. What is this, Lady Ada? Hey, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to a special edition of Show and Tell. We're here at the Ada Fruit Factory, as usual. It's me, Lady Ada, and Mr. Lady Ada, and we have a special guest engineer, Judith Henzel from TE, is here, and she also has a little robot to show off. And this is our mini race car kit build. Our mini race car, yeah. Yeah, my mini race yeah. car build. So I built one. Some people may built one. If you built one, yeah, we have some videos. Show up, show off. We have some videos from people who are remote as well. Yeah. That's cool. And uh, thanks for coming by, Judith. This is really neat. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're going to be doing a uh, special Ask an Engineer with Ask Engineers. <laughs> and uh, we have some cool videos. Uh, all of us are going, uh, some of us, I should say, not all of us, because we're like 100 something people, are going to some Formula E races yeah. soon. And you're an engineer who works on them. And uh, yeah. partnership with Andretti Technologies. Yeah, right. That's super cool. Exactly. And they use TE sensors inside of that. Yeah. And we exactly. Have, we have a TE breakout, too. Yeah, we have, yeah. And I have a little robot with a TE sensor, too, although it's not nearly as. Hardcore yeah. is the big ones, but you know it's the same idea, yeah. just smaller. And for the folks wondering, you can still you know pick up the pack and everything, and it comes with this button and all sorts oh, of stuff, and you can build this. So any of those things um, that you want to build, you don't have to do it tonight live. You can do it anytime. No, do anytime. Okay. They're fun little robots. All right, well let's start off with uh, Bill. Hey Bill. Hey Bill, show us your project. Welcome. How are you? Good. Hey. Good. So um, I hope you guys can see me okay. All right, I have. Uh, I did take your your kit, and I made a power chair simulator out of it. Now, for those of you who know what I do, uh, AT Makers makes assistive technology for folks, and uh, one of the things we we've done recently is we have uh, switch control boxes for power chairs for kids who can only use a couple of switches. And one of the problems is that I write code, simple, simple, simple um, Arduino code that adds a little bit of timing changes or a little bit of logic so that they can control these chairs with just two switches. And I end up testing it on the power chairs with the kids, and that's a problem. So I have had a plan for a long time to make what I used to call a mini Max, because I was working with Max Lasco, uh, where I could test it with just the two switches. And I actually bought your red robot kit months and months ago and never did it. And so this was a great motivator for me to go ahead and do this, and I did. Uh, while I was at it, I made uh, kind of a, a neat little 3D printed thing I'll show you uh, that lets you mount kind of anything on top real easily. And uh, so I 3D printed a Barbie size chair and, and I'll show you that. So if I can switch my camera, I'll show you how, I'm, how it looks, hopefully. You can do it, you can do it. Yeah, it's, it's way, way too many cameras um, right now. So, all right. So here's the actual kit. You guys can see that it's a little bit light, I think. No, I got it. You got it? You got the idea? All right. Yeah. So here's the, um, here's the basic kit. There are very few changes to the kit. Uh, in fact, the only changes you'll notice physically are that we added uh, some wires going into A1 and A3 for, for input from the buttons. Um, it works fine with the Bluetooth. Uh, you can drive it that way, but that kind of would defeat my purpose. The other neat thing that I, I like how this came out a little bit is if you look, I made these two little mount points uh, with triangles on top so that the, the holes in the bottom of this can just kind of slide on it. And that makes it real easy to pop on and off when you're trying to test. Uh, so you can have something that looks like a power chair with a Barbie on it and, and quickly uh, use it. Uh, as far as the, the, what the actual code inside of it does, uh, I probably need to change cameras again, sorry. Uh, not in my studio, you can probably tell that. Wow, you have a lot of cameras. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I did this special for you guys. Yeah. Um, Bill and I have a similar camera connection for uh, Yeah, so I learned that you can't have two of the same camera on Google Hangouts, Phil. No, you can't. That, that's a problem I learned 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> so so what, what we basically do with these kids, we give them two, cam two buttons. And so the blue one here is right hand, and it'll, it'll spin her to the right, and the left will spin her to the right, and if you hit both, <laughs> she'll move forward. And the problem with this, and if you've ever seen Ella on the videos, what she ends up doing is she ends up like aiming, 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 and then going, right? Yeah. And so that, that doesn't work real well. So what this lets, lets us do is it lets us test things out like once it's moving forward, if I let go of the right, it'll turn left instead of spinning left. Mm. So we can do like that, right? So now yeah. Yeah. Do more serpentine stuff. I hope we can get her back here. This is good for the, the parents and the caretakers who need to, um, you know, help the, the, the folks that we're, you're delivering this to. Like, yeah, here's how it works. There's a couple of parents right now that when they just saw that video, got really, really excited. 
uh, because they're actually waiting for that change, but I didn't have a way to test it. So this is a big deal for me. I needed to do it a long time ago. So I really do appreciate the motivator. Uh, the kit worked great. Uh, it's actually really easy to put together if anybody hasn't you know, done one. Uh, I, you know, I would certainly recommend it. I didn't use any of the sensors on it. I do have a need for some sensors for giving either haptic or audible sen uh, feedback when their chairs are too close. Well, uh, but make sensors. I, you can find <laughs> I, I, I saw she was there, so we'll I will uh, I'll, I'll reach out. But um, do you know something to tell when it's about to collide into a wall and it'll stop. Exactly. So, so a lot of times these kids they have what they call a caboose because underneath them they have a respirator or a BiPAP or uh, other devices that, that they don't realize that when they turn, the backside is going to hit the wall behind them. And so something that gives some kind of a, an indicator that, oh, your caboose is going to hit the wall would be a, a big deal. So I'll work on that. And now I can work on it on the on the model instead of having to have a $20,000 power chair, right? That's awesome. really cool. I have a couple of questions if you don't mind, Bill. Yeah. Um, this is really neat. I, I think that electric cars and folks who have mobility needs are one in the same because one of them just goes really fast and one of them kind of can go fast, but you might want to be able to, to stop close. And I'll let anyone decide which one which one that is. Because you, when you're going really fast, you have to have a lot of control. And when you're doing any type of mobility work, you still have to have a lot of fine control in, in these type of things. So this is a neat way for people to learn about controlling electric things that move. And vice versa. Oh, sorry. A lot of people I know who build little um, go-karts, they use wheelchair motors yeah. from old wheelchairs that have been thrown out. So back and forth, technology swap. There is so much that could be done right now in the mobility space that isn't for a variety of reasons. But there's so much in terms of feedback going into that device or feedback going to the person, right, in a, in a way that they can react to it. That there's so much we could do. And, and things like this, I mean, this should, this should really be built into every chair, right? The minute it becomes built into the chair, I'll just remove this. But in the meantime, we can make these things, we can make them for 50 bucks and adapt a chair that, that is, you know, it's amazing for these folks. And and I've seen, uh, you know, Lamar, I, I hear you when you say, you know, this stuff isn't that complicated. You're not wrong. I get it. But yeah. nobody's doing it, right? Yeah. So we have, show yes, them the way. Fun with this. We have a show and tell project we're going to try to show a video of it. It's uh, connecting your your My Mini Race Card Adafruit I.O. It might be mm -hmm. interesting for folks that have um, any type of mobility aid to also have data logging. So the so folks yeah. can see later, and there's also gets in temperature readings and all sorts of other stuff. But just knowing the usage patterns would be kind of nice too. I, I would tell you that. By the way, um, just I'll out him today. I would ask Chris Young about that. He is the yeah. best power power chair user I've ever seen. I've seen never seen anybody do that with a little sip and puff joystick. Yeah. Uh, and it is also his birthday today, so make sure. <gasps> you, oh wow! Yeah, I've got to sing to him, right? Not me. You guys have to sing to him. Absolutely. Okay, I don't totally sing to him. All okay, right. well, thank you so much, Bill, as always. All right, good day. Okay. I'm going to drop off to make sure he's got room. Okay. okay. Have fun room. All right. Okay. Rebecca, hello, Rebecca. Hey, How Rebecca. Are you doing? Oh, check out your cool pins. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought I'd wear all of my pins because I now have several. Um, and thank you guys for sending me the um, uh, Sparky Little Smoke Monster one. That one's really cool. Um, but anyway. Uh, I have I have my my mini race car, and Yay. it's it's, it's adorable. Um, I have three of these now, and I somehow keep getting more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can race them. I mean, <laughs> I, I I could um once I but this is the only one that I have put together. Um, I'm actually using it a lot for um curriculum writing right now, uh, because I'm working with my university to change over the entire freshman curriculum for the fall of 2018. And I really like this my mini race car kit, so I think we might try to use something like this. Um, but in addition to that, I've been making it fun. The first thing I did was add a switch, because it was really annoying to unplug the battery. Um, so that was immediately the first thing that I did. Um, I ended up pulling off a female JST connector from a broken lily pad. Um, so I was able to remove that and use it. Um, I also just added a NeoPixel stick. Ooh. I found it. I found two of them that were horribly soldered, mangled, and broken. Um, and I was able to repair one, and the other was unfixable. Um, so I harvested all the NeoPixels off the broken one um, and, like, threw out the board uh, and was able to save six out of the eight NeoPixels. Yay. 
I've coded it so that it'll uh, oh it'll it'll rainbow. It has oh, underglow nice. and it rainbows. Oh, nice. Um, which is really hard to see because yeah, it's see it. it's yeah. color. Um, but then it's got that. Do you just see the in there too? Flowers have ground lighting underneath. <laughs> Look at that. That's cool. I like the blue no. effect. Okay, they will now. Yeah, they will now. Um, like in the Fast and the Furious. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can also just, it like will cycle rainbow, but it's really hard to drive when it cycle rainbows. Um, so I ha added a separate, just straight rainbow effect, um, which is harder to connect, change to uh, once I yeah, already have it. The code is not listening for commands. Yeah. Right, which is why I have a separate thing for it. Oh, so you were, yeah, I see. You're going you're gonna to try to change the colors while you're driving, but instead you can just set it off on a pattern and then drive it around. Yeah, you might have to like, use uh, interrupts to like change the color so you can also listen to commands at the same time. Yeah. Well, this is what I could come up with with the time that I had to fix this code. Um, yeah, you have uh, so much more you can learn. Yep. Right. <laughs> uh, so I, I had it just do a straight rainbow without changing anything, and that way I can still drive it. Yeah, Bill in the chat suggested dot stars. Might, might yeah, you can use dot stars. Those are faster. But I think a lot of it is what happens is the, the NeoPixel code, it draws the colors. And while it's drawing the colors, you have to tell it, look for commands. So you have right. to interleave the data. So what you might want to do is set up a timer in Arduino. And the timer goes off every millisecond or two milliseconds. And then that changes the colors so that your main program is still looking for commands and driving the motors. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit more advanced, but I think you can handle it. And you'll learn a lot. I, I, I can, and that'll that'll be next week's problem. Um, <laughs> we have um, all summer. <laughs> I, I have all summer, and I have a year to figure out how I'm going to turn this into a curriculum. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, awesome. yeah. if, it's, if it's helpful and your school allows, you can always write the curriculum on learn.adafruit.com. Um, that way, the world can see it if you want to. Um, that way, it's always around. I know sometimes schools don't always have um, something like our learning system where you could print PDFs and do all that. But if it's helpful, let us know. Um, I will. I'll, I'll ask and see what they say. Yeah. All so right. We were, we were thinking of doing learn.adafruit.com and then like slash whatever school um, mm -hmm. down the road. Um, we, might, we might do that soon. So you might be a beta tester if, if someone's into that. That'd be neat. Well, I, I'm the one deciding the curriculum, so I get to ask all oh. these questions. Yay. <laughs> Boss lady. OK, so we're going to try to play some of the videos that were sent in as well. Um, Bill, since you're my friend in audio video world, can you hang around and tell me if you can hear the videos once they're going? Sure. Do you want me to text it? Yeah, you can put it in the chat, because I, I think I'm going to move my microphone to the speaker if yeah. YouTube doesn't slurp it in when it's YouTube. And if, if it does, great. But if it doesn't, I'll just move my microphone to sure. it. So no here we go. I'm going to try to screen share. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So there's not going to be audio on this one in the beginning. Um, this is our Adafruit I.O. project where you can use the My Mini race car and hook it up to Adafruit I.O. Yes, this changes from Wi-Fi to Bluetooth. Yeah. Sorry, from Bluetooth to Wi-Fi. So instead of using your phone, you can connect over the internet. But you know you have to have a Wi-Fi connection. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. It's a little bit different. But then you can graph like the temperature and the humidity and the speed. Okay, for show and tell, I wanted to bring bill? my new iteration of the My Mini Race okay. Car kit. The uh, previous version I had done used the Bluetooth capability so that I could control the car from the app on the iPad as well as stream the data about temperature and humidity. This time I did what I had threatened to do before, which was control the car using humidity. So I've just uh, updated the software, and I'm checking my serial port for humidity readings. And I'm getting readings around 55 at a peak. So now, with the humidity and temperature sensor here on the back, if I go ahead and blow on it, I should go over that value, and that's when the motors will engage. OK, that could make for a pretty interesting race. Uh, that is my show and tell of the Formula E My Mini race car kit using the TE connectivity humidity sensor and the little 3D printed parts on top of our My Mini race car kit. Hi, guys. I'm Tristice. Um, I'm an engineer at DigiKey Electronics, 
and I wanted to present to you my modifications for the My Mini Race Car. So I'm a very big fan of race cars and specifically street racing. So I wanted to give My Mini Race Car a kind of a street uh, race car kind of look. So in order to do that, I actually added um, three 16 um, Neo pixels and it's actually all powered by the Gemma, which is powered by the 3.7 um, lithium ion battery. So in order to kind of test this out and show you, so the LEDs and there's an LED at the bottom and it actually gives it that kind of um, the underbody look of a street race car. So in order to actually mount my Gemmas, I actually found um, USB cases, like they cover for the USB and kind of broke it off and just bent it to the side. And it actually is hovering over the, the wheel. So I don't actually hurt the wheel in any type of way. And it's really cool because you can actually just unscrew it and take it off. Pretty simple. And let's give it a whirl. <laughs> but anyway, um, I encourage everyone to actually come pick up one of these uh, My Mini Race cars. It's really cool. And show us what your modifications look like. What else cool can you guys come up with? Hey friends of Adafruit, I am Kevin from DigiKey and I was challenged to share with you some of the modifications I did to my mini race car. My mini race car is a joint collaboration between TV Connectivity, Adafruit, and DigiKey. Uh, we encourage everybody to buy this kit and do any kind of modifications they can to it and share it on Twitter with the hashtag MyMiniRaceCar. These things can go really fast and get a little hairy on the hairpin turns, so be careful. Uh, some of the modifications I did is I added Circuit Playground to the wheels. We always like the bling on the wheels. So as you turn the wheels, the accelerometer will change the color of the uh, NeoPixel LEDs. John Park created these great 3D printed fairings. And I used his design, and I, it's the same exact design. I just scaled it down a little bit, because his design, this was his original size. It's a little bit big, and when I'm going fast in this race car, I love driving this thing around, but I want to be as fast as I can. So these fairings, I wanted to line up with the actual wheels to reduce the drag. Another thing I did is the TE humidity and temperature sensor. I put on the back of the car, so as I'm passing my competitors, I want to be able to see how angry they are because their faces are going to get red and they're going to get hot. So that's why it's on the back of the car. Another thing I added was the roll bar. This thing, like I said, around hairpin corners, this can get a little tricky. So I want to make sure and protect myself when driving this thing. Uh, the really cool thing about this is Adafruit created the Blue Fruit app uh, for your iPhone or Android so you can drive this directly from your phone. But one other thing is you can actually drive it from your watch. We pull up the app here and see if everything's connected right. There it is. So now, you guys gonna come with me? Ah! Let's do this. Got my car. Digikey really went, uh... They went all out. Yeah, they went all out. Okay. All right, so that audio-video thing worked out. Sweet. I just need to stop this video. Here. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's like, you want to play all the videos? So for the, okay. folk, for the folks who couldn't make it to show and tell tonight, but they did have projects, um, we're just going to keep posting up, up on the site. Anyone can put it on Twitter, any social media platform. 
hashtag my mini race car. Cool. And uh, do you want me to show off mine? Show off yours, and then we got to go okay, to cool. the next show and tell. Okay, cool. I made one too. So what I did with mine is I built the race car, and I I, I didn't get to the three D printing part because I'm like kind of the engineer, not a mechanical engineer. <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer. But what I did is um, so in our app we added this um, capability, like you know you can drive the car, but we added. Um, uh, like a messaging center. Yeah. And so you can have humidity and temperature, but then when I looked at um, the kind of sensors that you put into the TE race cars, um, you have an accelerometer that tells it like the magnification. So what I did is I added um, a accelerometer and a crash sensor basically. That's so, cool. yeah. So let me, uh, hold on. Do the, the real Formula E cars have some type of collision detection or they, they just go as fast as they can? Um, they have like, like a accelerometer as well. So yeah. in the car, so it's useful if yeah. the car is crashing and... Um, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, they said like if it lifts and stuff? Oh, so they have a, there's a lift detector, so it's like if it knows like the, the it's coming off the ground? Yeah. Yeah, some kind no, of, We don't yeah. have an overhead for this. Oh, right sorry. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. Um, so yeah, so up here what I have is it says like the acceleration vector. So right now it's just measuring like gravity, mm -hmm. but like see if, if I um, do that. It says crash detected. Yeah. So that way as it moves also, um, whoa, <laughs> it'll um, it'll tell me, like you just said, like crash detected because it just hit your car. Sorry about that. Uh, and then um, also as it's moving, it'll tell me um, how fast it's going so yeah. I can like speed up or slow it down. So that's a, a modification I made. And you can get accelerometers pretty easily and then they just wire up over I squared C. So this one only does like plus or minus 16 G, mm -hmm. but that's enough for like Pretty much what this does. This That's doesn't really, for this one, yeah. Yeah, this one says like I think it does like maybe even a I big think crash. The it's like, of, like six soapbox derbies. Like in the US a long time ago, they would take these soapboxes and uh, girls and boys would make these things. They put them downhill, but maybe there's not as many hills and not as many outside sometimes. So yeah. um, this might be a neat neat thing to do. That's yeah. cool. And then Judith, you made do you have one? Yeah, I All also. Right. Made one? Yeah, with just some, you hold it up in front of the yeah. camera. Yeah. So you 3D printed the... So... Well, you said, well, <laughs> you, said you, had a, you had a friend and they, they had a 3D printer. Yeah, he had a 3D printer and he did it by himself. So um, it's not completely assembled so far because I did not have enough time to do it completely. But the goal is to keep it running and also add some stuff when I'm back home. Yeah, one of the things that you can add um, that you can add, like, especially if you're if you're interested in like the data output is um, you can measure the battery voltage. So you can yeah. see, especially when you really torque these little motors, they draw like an amp or two. Yeah. So the voltage really will dip quite a bit. So there's definitely going to be like some level of like you want to, you know, you can PWM the motors to have like different speeds, but like do that so your your battery doesn't dip too much so you get like the that's most cool. torque. So that would be, that's like a more advanced project. But for you, that's yeah. probably what you do all day. So you'd be like, this is so easy. <laughs> so there's a lot of sensors already built in and of course there's breadboard space to yeah. pick up other sensors. And okay, and we're um, gonna be retweeting and tweeting and posting about all the My Mini Race Car projects. A lot of folks, um, whether they're not, they might not be in this time zone or more, um, but they're putting up photos and videos. So we'll um, continue to do this. It might be neat one day to do a live video race where the video is yeah. live and we're racing This would cars. be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, this we're going to do another show and tell in just a few minutes. So folks who have non-mini non -mini my race car, that's a hard thing to say, non-mini my race car projects. See you in a couple minutes. All right. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Rebecca. Hey. Bye, Bye, everybody. See you soon. All right.